Hello witches and wizards, and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be showing you step by step on how I make my super iconic Happy Birthday Harry bath bombs. These are a top seller in my Etsy shop. I have been making them since April of 2017, and they are just everybody's favorite. I cannot wait to show you all the steps on how I create these. Before you start making bath bombs, you want to make sure that you have your gloves, your hair tied up, and also some kind of mask. You're going to be breathing in a lot of loose powders. You don't want that to go into your nose and into your lungs. It's very important. Even if you were to just wear a fabric face mask, that's okay. Just something that doesn't get powder into your nose. As you can see, I've been adding all of my dry ingredients. I will also be leaving a recipe down below for you to follow if you would like. I then am going to be adding all of my wet ingredients, my dye, my oils, my fragrances. Now I don't measure my oils and my fragrance. I know that a lot of other bath bomb people are probably watching this and screaming, but personally I just like to eyeball my oil. It, that's just what I do. And here is all of the ingredients in the mixing bowl. Next I'm going to take it over to my big stand mixer. I used to have to mix every single batch by hand, and I'm so glad that I got a stand mixer. It is seriously a lifesaver. I normally like to let my mixer run for about a minute to two minutes, not too long. If you mix it for too long in the stand mixer, it will dry out your batch. So I have to make sure to not let it mix for too long, give it a good test, Feel the batch, make sure it's the right texture, see if I need to add anything. But this batch actually came out perfect, and again I just eyeballed the oil and it came out flawless. The texture that I like to go for with my bath bombs is like a moon sand or wet sand. You never want your bath bomb batch to be too wet because it will start to expand in the molds. And you also don't want it to be too dry because it can't hold its shape when you press it into a mold. It will just kind of fall apart. The molds that I like to use for my Happy Birthday Harry bath bombs are a 3 inch circle mold. This is actually a 3 inch metal cake pan that I found online and it works perfectly. I like to lightly sprinkle in the bath powder mixture into my mold and then press it down firmly with a little plastic container. Uh, that actually fits into this mold perfectly. It used to hold mica glitter and now I use it for this. Then I like to go in with my thumbs and just make sure that all the edges are pressed down. After I pressed all my bath bomb mix into molds, it is time to let these dry out. I normally like to let my bath bomb sit for about three to five days before painting them. Again, this will depend on the weather and also the humidity. After the bath bombs are completely dry, that is when I will begin painting. I like to use an airbrush when painting these. When I first designed them, I did use to hand paint them. And to be honest, I wasted a lot of bath bombs because I, I would have mistakes. So having an airbrush and also having a stencil is really handy, especially if you're trying to have them to all look the same, as well as if you have a whole bunch of items to paint. Airbrushes are very handy and they're very easy to use as well. When I paint with stencils, what I like to do is normally pull on the trigger and kind of do little bursts of paint instead of just holding it down and spraying over the whole stencil. I find when tapping the trigger multiple times, it, I don't get as much bleed with my stencil and they just come out a lot more crisp. Why did I turn this around to show it off? Why did I do that? Anyways, here is me airbrushing. Again, you can see that I'm just tapping the trigger multiple times when painting and they're all coming out really crisp. Uh, I try my best to line them up. Sometimes they're not perfectly in the center, but these are birthday cakes delivered from Hagrid. They're not going to be perfect. They're also hand painted and handmade. I'm not trying to make them perfect, so that's okay to me. When I was done painting, I let these dry again for probably a couple of days, not too long, and then that is when I began shrink wrapping. I didn't record when I was putting them all into the bags, but I was wearing gloves, and I did have to then individually put them all into their own shrink wrap bags. Uh, I just thought that was boring to watch, but you can see me here using the heat press. This is a really handy way to shrink wrap your material and cut off any of the extra shrink wrap plastic. 
You might also be able to see that all the extra pieces that are coming off of the bags I'm putting into a little cotton tote bag right there onto the left of the screen. When handling these little pieces of plastic material, they become really staticky and putting them into a cotton tote bag I found makes it a lot easier to work with. It After I do a quick pass over all of the bath bombs that I lined up on my table, then it is time to start individually heat gunning all of the bath bombs. I like to take them and kind of fold down all the sharp corners. Once the plastic will start to become cold, those little corners could probably puncture your skin. So what I like to do is just make sure that all of those edges are flat and smooth. It also gives a lot smoother look to the bath bomb and the finished product. After I was done with the heat gun, it was time to flip all of these bath bombs over on my table and then start adding the tags. I do design these myself. I use a Dymo printer to print these out at home. I just have the ingredients as well as saying that it's hand painted and made with a handmade stencil. Now these stickers are actually not my favorite. I am looking for new labels. They do kind of hang off the edge of my bath bombs a little bit, especially on certain design bath bombs that I make. But they're not horrible. I do know plenty of other small business bath bomb makers that also use these same tags on these shapes of bath bombs and theirs also hangs over the edge. So I am not really that worried about how the back labels look. Uh, to me, it's not that important. But I am looking for new labels, just to like put it out there. I am looking for new labels. After I have all the labels on my bath bombs, it's then just time to push over the extra pieces of the label onto the bath bombs so that they lay flat. And that's it. That is how I create my Happy Birthday Harry birthday cake bath bombs. It's pretty easy. And this is something that I'm really proud of. I have been making these for a long time. I did used to make these with a handmade mold and I used to hand paint every single one and I've really grown with them and it really means a lot. For all the support through the years and people buying these and using these, it really means so much. Also, I want to say thank you so much if you watched this video. Tell me what you think. Do you like these behind the scenes of me making bath bombs? I've been trying to find like my niche for YouTube and I don't really know what to do yet. So leave a comment down below if you enjoyed this or if you have any other ideas on what I should be making for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all are having a super magical July. Happy Harry Potter's birthday month. Please continue to wash your hands wear a mask, and bring justice to Rihanna Taylor. Please say her name. I love you all so much. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.